You're listening to Paris Search Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. Paris Search UK Radio. Paris Search Radio, broadcasting to the UK and beyond. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Supernatural Chat Show with your host, Sean Cadman, only on Parasearch Radio. Good evening, everybody. It's Wednesday again, and it's time for the Supernatural Chat Show with me, your host, Sean Cadman. Thank you for joining us. And tonight we're joined by my guest, Mr. Ryan Griffiths. Are you there, Ryan? I am indeed. Hello, Sean. Good evening, mate. How are you? I'm not too bad. I'm suffering with a man flu, as we were speaking about before we went on air. And I do hope <laughs> everyone can hear me okay. Yeah, coming through fine. So basically, start off the same as I start every week. Um, if you would take a few minutes, just introduce yourself to our listeners, tell them who you are, what you do, and why you do what you do. Sure, no problem. Um, well, I'm, I'm psychic medium. Um, I've been working as a psychic medium for um, the last 10 years or so, uh, traveling all over the country and Northern Ireland and places like that doing um, demonstrations of mediumship and private readings. Um, but pr- primarily, I'm a paranormal investigator. Um, I run my own team, along with Lee Wallace, um, a friend of mine, and that team's Spirit Finders UK. And we do what many other groups do. We go around haunted locations. Um, but we don't really do public events. But the reason that I do it is just for a pure passion of the paranormal, um, because the feeling that when you get a true connection, not only with spirit, but with something that's evidential, then uh, it's there's no other feeling like it, and it's like you're constantly yeah. trying to chase that, if that makes sense. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I can relate with that myself, yeah. It's a strange, it's, it's like electrical feeling when you have that pure connection. Um, it's really good. Yeah, definitely. Um, what originally got you interested in the paranormal then? Was it same as everybody else, something you saw when you was younger? Yes, but it was actually it's quite an interesting story, to be fair. Um, I'll keep it short and sweet. <laughs> um, <laughs> us Scotsmen are known for waffling on. I don't mind a waffle. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good, That's all good. Um, Many moons ago, um, I lived with my grandfather up on the Shetland Isles. Um, and... As a typical child, I was frightened of the dark and things. Um, and my bedroom was like an L shape. To see out my bedroom door, which would be where the landing was, you had to go to the bottom of my bed and sort of look round to the left. And I always had the landing light on at night and the door open, so I had that little bit of night light. Yeah. Um, and on one particular night, I woke up um, and I got this, just as I think the, the cheesy way to describe it is that eerie, spooky feeling. Um, and so I, I, yeah. I go, went to the bottom of my bed and I looked to where I felt this feeling, this, this energy was coming from. And there in the doorway, as sure as I'm talking to you now, was this little girl who looked to me to be about four years old, um, really nicely dressed, very Victorian-type look to her. Um, and she was as clear as day, you know, like the person mm. you see in the street. Anyway, this freaked me out a little bit. I went back to sleep. The next morning, I mentioned it to my grandfather. Now, he's from Tooting in, in uh, East London. 
so he was very matter of fact. He didn't he didn't want to know anything about it, and he sort of shrugged it off. Well, about ten years went past, and I spoke to my grandmother about the same situation, and she started crying. And she left the room, and I thought, well, what if I said this upset her? <laughs> and you know, as you would do, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And she came back in about 10 minutes later with um, two photo albums, rather old looking. And she opened the first one and she's crying her eyes out, remember? So she opens the first one and she says, is this the girl that you've seen? And I looked at the photograph and I said, yeah, but I said, um, she wasn't wearing those clothes. And her hair was different, you know. So she's absolutely like bawling her eyes out, as we would say. And she opens up the second one and she says, is this how she looked? And she showed me this little girl, and it was identical to the absolute image of what I had described. Wow. Um, and it, this is where it gets interesting. Um, you should know, so I would imagine um, Sean being that sort of end of the country, but um, back in those days, like going, I'm not saying you're that old, Sean. <laughs> I am, though. <laughs> my grand's like in her 90s, right? You know. um, but Going back in the old Victorian type days, they used to take photographs of the dead and things, you know. Yeah, yeah. And my gran, being an ex-Romani gypsy, um, I say ex-Romani gypsy, she is a Romani gypsy, she took a photograph of her first child. Now, her first child had passed by some mysterious illness. I think it, if it, back then it was like pneumonia or something, and, you know, it just sort of came on, and bless her, she passed away. And how I described it is how my granny dressed her, how she fixed her hair, everything. And she wow. just couldn't believe it. So that from that moment on, I mean, many things happened. There was a big gap and things, but that is essentially what really, really sparked. Yeah. It's, it's, it's when you see something like that, it, it never leaves you, does it? It's always well, there. Yes, yeah. Well, that goes back to the feeling I was talking about, about you're always chasing it as a paranormal yeah. investigator, you know. Yeah. I mean, I cr- the first thing that got me into investigating, I used to be a taxi driver. Sure. And I was going up this little country lane towards, uh, it's called Cooper's Arms, and yep. it used to be part of Cromwell's Barracks. Okay. And just as I'm pulling up a gravel drive, a soldier appeared at the side of the road, yep. walked into the car, the whole car cut off, just stopped dead. Yep. But you could see every button on his tunic and everything. And he walked through the car. And as he went out the other wing, the car started again. And then it disappeared. And four people that were waiting for the taxi come running down and said, we saw that, we saw that. And from that minute, I thought, wow, there's something there. I need to look into all this. Yeah. And it's just one of them moments, I think, once you witness something like that, like you did, yeah. you're hooked. Well, you know... What you're speaking about, about the soldier going through the car, myself and my cousin Joe had a similar experience in his Ford Capri. <laughs> well, we were sort of speeding along this long straight, just as you do with your, your Capris, you know, because the only thing that they can do is go fast in a straight line. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and a similar thing, a monk shot across the road. The car didn't cut out or anything, but it seemed to, it was a strange one. It hit the side of the car. We panicked, braked, but it, we never seen it come through the car, and then it just appeared on the other side of the road. Wow. It's strange yes. thing. Yeah. I mean, what got you into this, the psychic medium side of the paranormal? Was that something that just grew you grew into? or? Well, to be honest, um, it's. I mean, any medium will tell you the same thing. They've always had experiences all the way through their lives, um, and I have too. You know, I fall into that bracket as well. You know, yeah. many different things, as I explained about um, my grandmother's um, first child. Um, there was many things that I seen and experienced when I was younger, um, but I always sort of like pushed it away and pushed it away. Um, and one night in particular, there was a local, as many towns and villages have, in a newspaper, there was a clairvoyance evening advertised. Um and I went along to it with my wife. And uh, I got seven messages in the one evening. Uh, and wow. I, I always remember the medium walking in. I mean, I don't know um, how many of these type of nights you've been to, Sean, but uh, they always have the audience sort of sat there and there's a table at the front and um, 
usually a host. They'll play some music and then the medium will come in. Um, when the medium walked in, she made immediate eye contact with me and she said to me during the first message, I could speak to you all night. As soon as I walked in the room, I felt drawn to you. So when the night finished, I spoke to the people involved and the medium. And I could see, while she was giving other people messages, I could see what she says was her guide standing yeah. beside her, speaking to her. And I, I described mm -hmm. him and she was blown away. She said, no one has ever been able to um, describe my, my guide, apart from herself, obviously. Yeah. So she invited me to what's called the closed circle, um, uh, where I could go and learn a little bit about mediumship and spirituality and go from there. Wow. Well, is it which do you actually prefer? Do you prefer the medium side or the investigating side? I'm going to be absolutely brutally honest and say the investigating side. Um, the reason for that is because I don't, I'm not one of the, these mediums who, um, and that's no disrespect to other mediums, but I'm not one of these mediums who like to glorify it, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be the next famous medium I don't, I don't want to be um, put on a pedestal for it if that makes sense yeah of course it does yeah so I like to use it when needed and that's that's pretty much it yeah but what what's your thoughts on the it's like almost like a, a tidal wave of mediums have appeared over the last say five to ten years sure do you think that's due to the paranormal just being more in in the sort of mainstream now and people jumping on the bandwagon, or do you think they are genuine mediums and there's just more of an awakening out there? Um, I think that there's actually... Uh, there's more of an awakening out there. As in, there is certainly more people... Be, there's a larger interest starting to build up from it, um, not only from the paranormal investigating side, but um, the just the mediumship side. You know, there's a lot of um, yeah. interest suddenly arisen in the last couple of years. Uh but I think also there's a lot of what I call cereal box mediums. Um, and I, I say things how they are, Sean. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, oh, definitely. I very much think that there's a lot more... Everybody can be a medium, basically. Yeah. Um, it's about listening to yourself, listening to your thoughts, listening to your feelings. If you go on investigation, I very, very often say to my guests... Um, or any events I happen to go on, um, I always say, pay attention to how you feel before you go on these events and then, you know, pay attention to how your feelings change or may change while you're on the event. Yeah. And the problem is, uh, am I going to, I hope I'm not going off on a tangent. <laughs> no, no, carry on. <laughs> Basically, mediums, getting back to the point there about the mediums, um, there's so many people who want to be mediums. There's so many people that will go to spiritualist church once and then they start advertising everywhere that they're a medium. Um, but what I always say to people and I say to all the listeners listening now is if you approach a medium for a reading, don't accept it, the information unless it's absolute gold. And what I mean by that is any medium can give you what's called a cold reading or something of that nature, and start saying, I have your grandmother here. Well, that's brilliant. If you have my grandmother there, then please tell me what she looks like. Yeah. Tell yeah. me what colour her eyes were. What do, what colour of dress does she have on? Um, they will be, because I can assure you, if any of my loved ones were to come through, they will give you some sort of concrete gold that this is them, and yeah. so I know that this is them. Yeah. So unless you can give that, personally, I, I'm not interested. I say it's the confirmation details. Like I say, granny, I've got your granny through. is just so broad. Uh, unless there's something there that can concretely evidence prove that that is that person's relative, ask, yeah. quest ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. That's right. Always ask questions. Uh, talking of questions, I've got one. Kelly Ellis is yeah. asked in the chat room. What's the most active venue that you've investigated? The most active venue that I've ever investigated has to be Jedburgh Castle Jail. Uh, well, it's actually on a par between Jedburgh Castle Jail and the village, to be honest. 
the village of Mansfield because they're yeah. both very, very active locations and the village is fast becoming um, a very popular uh, location as well. Yeah. Yeah, I was so on the village and we was, I don't know if um, Lee's showing you the footage where the door was slamming. Yes, yes. That was the night when we went there and that was crazy. There was quite a lot going off that night. Yeah. Yes, he, he messaged me when that actually happened. He was like, you've got to see this. You've got to look at this. Yeah. Um, and it was just unreal. And I sat and I, um, no disrespect to him, as I do with any evidence I get, and I, I analysed it, I blew the images up, I did everything I could. And he does show, during that footage, as you well know, you know, he does yeah. show the full door, so there's no... You know, and when he opens it, there's no way someone could just, if you've been there, could get out of the way that quick. No, no, there's no chance at all. And the bit that got us, because we didn't spot it at first, and we were watching the footage over, and when he walks through the door, there's the bit where the figure ducks behind one of the pillars. Yes, I've seen that, yes. Uh, it's Oh, it's crazy. Little shadow figure, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, definitely anybody listening who's looking for a, a good night, a good venue, I could recommend the village myself. It's a fantastic place. Well, I'm not sure if he's sold out because, I mean, there's many teams that go there naturally, and I'm sure yeah. if you look on Facebook and the paranormal groups, they will find people going to the village. Yeah. Um, but Lee himself uh, obviously has Haunted Events UK, doesn't he? And um, That's right. I know that... Uh, a lot of his events have been selling out quite quickly recently and he's had to put on extra dates. But I'm sure that he's got ones available for the village if anyone does want to um, check that out. Yes, def- definitely worth going to. What makes what made the castle such an active venue? What sort of things happen there? Well, um, um, lots and lots of different things. They have um, great big metal cell doors in there that are like so heavy, even... A big man like yourself there, Sean, would struggle to sort of open and close it properly. Um, and I've seen the door slam and we caught it on camera. Similar idea to the village where it was just backwards and forwards, opening and shutting, opening and shutting. Um, and lots of other things, you know. Yeah. Like, like uh, things being thrown. We caught on camera a microphone, a static microphone getting ripped off the wall. Wow. Excuse me. Um, and many, many other things, you know. You say with your invest- your team that you're with, do you ever go out just, I mean, we do ourselves, just think, oh, sod it, we're bored. Put all your cameras in a bag and clear off to the local cemetery or derelict buildings? Very much so, Sean. Um, we do it quite a lot, actually. Um, we are not one of these, um, although we've been going for like nearly six years or so now, um, we, we, we're not predominantly about uh, getting our footage out there or getting a massive Facebook following or anything of that nature. We just enjoy yeah. doing it. So quite often, like you just said, we'll pack the stuff up in the car and off we'll go to uh, a cemetery or a local um, historical place or such yeah. like. Is that, I mean, being a medium, do you sometimes struggle, when you, you just go out to these places, do you sometimes struggle to keep yourself closed you sort of get bombarded by spirits wanting to talk? Yeah, but, but on location, yes, very much so. Because uh, naturally, as a medium, I'm opening myself up before going yeah. uh, so that I am ready to communicate with spirit. And, of course, there is times where it's a, it feels like um, a little bit like a crowded room or at a football match where um, you've got them coming at all angles and you're, like, saying, whoa, 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 you know and trying to get a fix on one particular um, spirit or one particular energy or whatever the case may be. Um, but when, when finishing the evening, I don't find that, I don't get anything that really follows me home, as people may say, or yeah. um, closing down, because I have a good, strong mindset. So when going in, I any, anything that people may call evil or dark or anything like that, um I have no trouble from because I have such a strong belief system and such a strong mindset. That's, that definitely helps. That does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is there anything that you've ever experienced that's made you think twice about what we do? Um, not from a spiritual side or, or um, evidence or activity side of things, more from the people, if I'm yeah. honest. There's such 
a ne- amount of negativity, especially at the moment. There's a lot of negativity going around the paranormal field. Um, uh, the competition is ridiculous. Uh, people, <laughs> rather than just getting along, uh, rather than just being friendly and, and, and joining together, there's so much arguments and so much competition. It it just takes the fun away from it from t- at times. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more on that. It's there's a few times I've thought I'm had enough. I can't be doing yeah. all this. And then sit down and you think you think no, just, just ignore these people, let them get on with it. And especially doing paraphors, the amount of backlash we've had off people has been yeah. crazy. Well, it's like um, there's a, a I'm not going to name any names naturally because it's um, private conversations. But what I can say is um, the, there's a friend of mine who has a situation, as I have as well personally in the past, where people get jealous of what they do yeah. um, or the people that they mix with or the events that they go on. And it's like, why? Why not just let people have their own experiences and do their own thing? It doesn't mean that teams will change or people will not be your friends anymore. It just means that they want experience. Yeah, They want yeah. to get around. Let them get on with it and support them. Yeah, I don't understand this whole competition thing where everybody yeah. seems to want to prove that they're the best at what they do. and We're the best investigating team, I'm the best medium, and it's just like but we're all looking for the same thing, surely. Right. Absolutely, Sean. I, you know, you basically said my next statement for me there. That's, <laughs> that, that is exactly it, though, isn't it? We're, yes. we're, um, we're all looking for the same thing. How we do that is our own... Um, decisions, you know, if we want to go to a certain place to investigate, that's our decision. Um, Precisely. Your friends, your colleagues, or whoever they may be, if they are true colleagues, true friends, and true supporters, then they'll be with you regardless what you do. Yeah. I mean, I, I often like it to the playground. It's like, well, you, if you're their friends, you can't be my friend. If you go out with them, you're not coming yeah. out with us. It's like, oh, ground walk, really? That's <laughs> absolutely right. It's like I know for a fact, and again, I'm not naming no names. I know for a fact that if I said to you, right, Sean, I'm going to um, come down and visit you next weekend. We're going to go on a little, like you just said there, we'll just pack the stuff up and go out somewhere. Um, I know that there'd be at least half a dozen people that would start whinging and moaning about it and saying, you can't do that. You're part of this team or you're doing this. Yeah. Or <laughs> exactly. It's uh, got another question for you. Yep. Um, yep. Kelly, again, says, what is your take on shadow people? Well, I think the viewers are going to regret asking me questions, right? <laughs> um, basically, what, what in my, my opinions of shadow people is I don't actually like categorising things because yeah. in my, my opinion, and again, it can only be my opinion because I have no proof uh, uh, I can't think of the word I was looking for there. Um, I have no proof to back up what I'm saying, but I have my own experiences. Um, as far as I'm concerned, spirit are spirit. Ghosts are ghosts. And the, the reason I've changed the, the, from spirits from ghosts is because I believe ghosts to be like a residual energy, like yeah. a, an imprint of something possibly negative, something possibly good, whatever, in a certain location. Um, I strongly believe that walls can hold that energy vibration, mm-hmm. as can the earth and such like. Um, so as far as shadow people are concerned, um, it's just a representation of spirit. And just because it's shadow, just because it's dark, does not mean that it's actually exactly that. It's not doesn't mean that it's dark or it's yeah. evil or anything like that. If I tried to come through from, from the spirit side of life to show myself to you, Sean, it might take a lot of my energy. Yeah. So I yeah. might only be able to do it as a ball of light or as moving an object or as coming through as a shadow. So I'm a bit one-sided when it comes to um, putting, a, oh, what's the word, categorizations on um, like shadow people and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree, I agree that it's, I think there's too many people these days will label some, such as like a shadow person as a negative or evil entity. Well, like you say, that could yeah. be the only way that spirit can show itself at that time. That's, right. That's absolutely a bit. Of course, it's Hollywood. I, uh, and 
among many subjects of the paranormal, it's Hollywood and Ghost Adventures and all these other different shows. No disrespect to any of that. Um, it's all good in its own right. Um, but it's due to many things, such as media and, and, and Hollywood and such, that end up making you categorise things and say that, oh, well, it's bad because it's a, it's a dark shadow figure. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ouija, Ouija boards are, are bad. In fact, they're not at all, in my opinion. They're just a communication device. Yeah. And I, I think it's the same with any any form of communication. It's how you use it. It's your knowledge of being able to use it properly that Absolutely. affects it. Absolutely. Jumping back onto what you just mentioned about residual. So, are you a believer in that stone tape theory? Uh, yes, yes. Um, where like um, things can be imprinted and re re replayed, so to speak. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Absolutely. Because. You always hear, through all most ghost stories, you always hear about um, houses being haunted because it's the land that it's, the house is built on and such like. Yeah. Yeah, because, again, it, like I said, it, I, a strong believer that if, for instance, a very violent attack happened here in my home, I mean, God forbid it never did, but, you know, um, then there's every chance that, that that energy, that strong energy of that particular event could soak into the wall, so to speak. And so... In, 50 years' time when a paranormal investigation team comes along, they may well have experiences. Yeah, that's it. It's, I mean, um, Richard Felix was very big on his stone tape theory. He built a machine to try and sort of do things plugged into a wall and yeah. had a smoke machine trying to get something to appear in that. Yeah. Uh, Did you not recently do, um, I think, on, on Facebook Live, was it, recently? Uh, yeah, yeah. In a barn or something, wasn't it? Is that right? Yeah, that's, yes. I think he's done yeah. a couple of them with his machine that he's got. Uh, I think it's it's an interesting theory. It's about when you get into the stuff like different stones will hold more of a memory than others, and yes, it's, like it's a minefield. Such, yeah, <laughs> yeah um, as I say, say, a total believer in that because um, it's in my eyes, it's been proven many times, hasn't it? You know, definitely, yeah. Like the when you, people say they've seen a spirit walk through a wall, it's because yeah. to me that's the stone tape theory because that's the path that they've taken previously. Yeah, absolutely. And they often say, "How come? Why are they walking through the door? Uh, the wall? Why are they not just going through where the doorway is situated?" Because in their day, it might not have been the building that you're actually in. It might have been another building that was in on that same spot, and that may well have been, like you just said, where they would have gone in and out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, is the if you could investigate anywhere in the world, where would it be? It would absolutely be Alcatraz, and um, I would absolutely give anything to go and um, and uh, the little island I forget what it's called now. Um, oh, is it Pog Pogvelia? Yes, sort of yes, like? yes, that's the one. The one yeah. there. I think Ghost Adventures actually went there um, quite a few years ago now, actually. Yeah, and it's, they don't let people on there, do they? they it's rare. I had, um, I had Hazel Hazel Ford on a yeah, few weeks ago, as a guess, and she is she was saying she's actually she's been speaking to the Italian government and everything, and she's managed to get a pass to go on there. Oh, brilliant! She's got to go over another member of the team just to like a health and safety thing, see what areas they can use. But yeah. Hazel will be doing some events there in the near future, apparently. So that'll be good. That'd be awesome. So, I think I think we should um, get our tickets sorted for that one. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's, I think it's one of them places that everybody wants to tick off a bucket list. Oh, big time! Yeah, big time. There was a. I'm sure there was. Um, wasn't there, I mean, I don't want to start digging up negative stuff. Wasn't there a team that put, there was some bad press about that? Was there not um, a team that was going to book that out or something that didn't actually have the event booked? If that makes sense. Yes, yeah, that was. Um, well, I don't actually know enough about it to comment, but um, it just popped into my head there. I thought I'll check if that's right. Yeah, I think it's that. Is it Alias Sanctus that there's. I'm not 100% sure, matey, because I didn't actually follow what was going on, to be honest. Yeah, I think they booked a lot of venues, or supposedly booked a lot of venues, took money off people for them, and then it was found out in the end that they hadn't booked any of these venues. It's all. It's all going through the legal process at the minute, people getting okay. refunds, etc. Doesn't doesn't uh, that come come into what we were sort of 
almost touching upon before about all the negativity and competition and things that people tend to get in over their heads, don't they, sometimes? Hello? <laughs> that all sounded a bit alien, man. <laughs> oh, right. What I was saying was, um, you know, it sort of touches upon what we were saying earlier, where um, there's a lot of negativity coming into the paranormal field at the moment and a lot of competition, so some people tend to get in over their heads. Definitely. Definitely. It's, it's harder than it looks. Yeah. It's, I mean, say it, without naming names, I know some teams who they started up, and within two or three months, they're holding events. They're all classing themselves as mediums, and yeah. things have just got out of hand. Well, I know people and teams who have spent thousands upon thousands of, of um, pounds on equipment and things, and you just think, this is great, and I I think that's fantastic. I have nothing against it. That's brilliant. But really, is there any need? Because, Precisely. you know, you've just started up. Take your time. Enjoy it. See where it goes. It's, I mean, I'm, personally, I'm a back-to-basics investigator. I just like the... The basics, my camcorder, voice recorder, and a camera. And I'm happy with that. <laughs> Absolutely. I couldn't agree more, matey. I couldn't agree more. It's, I mean, we, we have had all the kit. We've, we went through the phase of having I mean, all the flight cases like everybody else. And you get on a location, you spend your first hour and a half unpacking your cases and setting everything up. And I got to the point where I'm thinking, this is a waste of time. That's right. Well, he, actually, I'll, I'll ask yourself a question, Sean, if that's okay. Yeah, of course it is, right. What would you say is your favourite piece of equipment and why? Um, can I have two? <laughs> no, uh, yes, of course you can. It's myself and a voice recorder. Good man, good man. Because I honestly that's... believe, I don't class myself as psychic or medium, but I always trust my gut instinct. Well, again, it comes back to what I was saying about people being in touch with their feelings when they go on an investigation. Because yeah. if you if you have wobbly legs or a bad knee or a sore stomach or a sore head or whatever the case may be, the list could be endless. Um, and you go on an investigation and suddenly it disappears or suddenly you get a pain in a place you didn't have a pain before. And mm. when you leave that area or that event or whatever, it disappears. Well, that's the evidence that a lot of people miss. Yes, yeah. I mean, our, when we do events, we normally do team events. Every now and again, people come along who've not investigated before or rookies, so to speak. Yeah. And my first piece of advice to them every time is, if at any point you don't feel right, something doesn't feel right in your gut, in your spirit, in your soul, tell us and we'll take you out, we'll get yeah. yourself back together. And I say that to trust your own instincts, your own feelings, before you any equipment, trust yourself. Absolutely. As I say, you know, that's exactly how I like to operate as well. Got a, quite a big question here for you. This is off Jordan Brooks. I just thought to read yep. this is interesting, this one. It's put, do you think uh, do you think apparitions and even residual environments, like when a person sees a location as how it was decades centuries ago could it be a slip in time like when two different moments in time present and past briefly collide with each other so i'm going to take that as if um someone such as myself or you or whoever was on an event and that's when they see something like that like that um it's a bit like when a medium gets information they get like um they may talk about how they're being shown something or they're they're, they're seeing yeah. something it's that's how I see it. Not so much a slip in time, but more a, a psychic impression, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. So that, again, it's almost coming back to that stone tape theory, isn't it? Because um, you go into a location, you sense something, you maybe see a spirit walking through a wall. It all comes into the same, again, it's not, I don't like categorising it, it's all the same thing. It's just a different way for spirit to show you something. You've got The question you've got to ask yourself is, why are you being showing that? Why are you seeing that? What is important about what you're seeing? Yeah. Um, as much as that sounds very simple for me to say, it's actually a very difficult thing to do when you're on an investigation because you've got so much going on. I mean, I don't need to tell you that. You've done it many times. But um, you've got so much going on in your mind, looking after guests or um, moving different 
equipment about and different things. And it's difficult to pay attention to what you've been shown or what you've heard. Or, yeah, you know. definitely. Definitely. The usual response, response of what the hell was that? And then yeah, instead of actually stopping and thinking what it might have been and what it was trying to show you, yeah, I think, yeah. I think everybody's guilty of that one. Um, the thing is, is the people, and it's quite a common thing. It's not a, not a, a nasty remark to people, but it's quite a common, I've done it myself. But if you're, for instance, shown a, a room that was like a set, I don't know, what would you call it, a castle kitchen, for instance, and you saw a woman standing by a certain part of the room. Yeah. Uh, you, the actual message from spirit there is, I am, this is where I like to stand, this is where I am standing now, you know. Um, yeah. So rather than looking at that image that you've been shown and going, oh, I don't, I'm seeing this room, I, I don't know what it means, why not just simply say what you're seeing? Why not just say, yeah. oh, I'm seeing a woman stood over there. Yeah, instead of trying to complicate things. Yeah, bring it up. yeah definitely. Spirit understand, the, my, from my experience and my my spiritual knowledge, I'm sure other mediums will say the same thing, spirit under spirit understand how difficult it is for us to um, get to grips with what we're seeing and what we're experiencing. So why would they make it too difficult? So you've just got to look at the simplest of things. What are you seeing? Talk about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we, we're we guilty as investigators of overcomplicating it, definitely. Yeah. It's, it's it, human nature, isn't it? It is. I mean, we carry that much equipment around and go, well, that piece didn't react, but this piece did. So, But it's, then you've got to ask yourself, well, why did that piece react and not that piece? Yeah. Whereas if you've just got your simple camcorder, cameras, your basics, you've not got all that added complication of trying to work out why a piece of equipment didn't pick something up. That's right. It's, oh, it's a minefield, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it you, you, that's one subject you could actually sit and speak about for hours. Mm, definitely. But what's your thoughts on apps, on these apps that people have got on the phones and the tablets and things? Well, um, it's varied, to be honest, because we actually did, for Spirit Finders UK, the team that um, I'm part of, uh, we actually did an episode where, um, when I say episode, we like put like little episodes together for YouTube and things. Um, yeah. And we did one that was focused primarily on apps. And we went to 30's Drive. And everyone know well, anyone that's connected with the paranormal field will know 30's Drive. Um, and we looked at four different apps and we sort of tried them out and we sort of seen what responses. And some of them, to be honest, were very generic. Um, sound seems to be going a little bit here. Oh, can you hear me now? Sean? Hello? Sean? Oh, it looks like Sean's dropped out. Bear with us just oh. one second. I don't know where he's disappeared to. I'll keep talking to you until he arrives back. Okay. What was you saying, babe? <laughs> I, I was just saying that um, we were talking about apps and um, what was my opinion on apps uh, in the paranormal field. Okay. I, I was sort of saying that at 30 East Drive, which most people know the, that are linked with the paranormal, um, the group that I'm part of, Spirit Finders UK, we took four different apps and we sort of looked at them, tested them out and sort of seen what responses, if anything, that we got from them. Um, oh, yeah. And what I found was most are very generic, as in, you know, the responses are not very intelligent. You know, um, yeah. the, there was a one app in particular called the Ghost M2 app, and that actually seemed to work very, very well. Um, it, it keeps breaking up a little bit. Oh, Sean's back in the room. <laughs> oh, hello. hello. We can hear you, Sean. We can hear you, Sean. That's absolutely fine. Is, where is the bad sound coming from? Is it my end? Or? No, it's actually Sean's end at this moment in time, so he'll sort that out, I'm sure. It's the weather. We've got bad weather tonight. I think that might be the issue because um, everything's he, fine he, this end. He needs to get his mice to run faster. <laughs> he needs to feed them better, clearly. Yeah, um, that's it. Apps are very difficult, aren't they? They are yeah. They are incredibly difficult to judge at the moment. There's not enough research that's gone into apps, do you not think? Absolutely. I think um, with the technology that we have through different various equipment that we use in the paranormal field, a lot of that 
energy and that time and money as well could easily be put into something that was really, really good, um, or potentially really, really good, I should say. Mm. Uh, there's one called Echo Box that uh, seemed to give good results, and that works similar to the the SB7 Spirit Box. Yeah. But the problem I have is I'm very sceptical as well as I am a believer, and that I don't like the interference from the radio. So what I did with my spirit box was we took the aerial out so that we just got the static noise and we still get the vault. Mm-hmm. So, I've used the echo box before now on the investigations. Yeah. But I think some of these apps, they're really interesting to use because sometimes you just trying something different is is quite good, really. That's it, yeah. I, th- I think basically with a one person's opinion such as myself is, a little bit critical towards them. It doesn't mean to say that they don't work or they're not good for one team or one person. Try everything. Try anything. Let's just try and get that communication out there. Let's try and prove that the paranormal world really does exist. Let's get that evidence that's absolutely concrete. And how we do that is, well, there's lots of options out there. Just try anything. And if it doesn't work, try something else. Yeah. I agree with that. Sean, are you back in the room? I'm back, yes. <laughs> back in the room? Yeah, just completely lost it. Let's signal for a minute there. Oh, I'll leave I'm you back so... to it then, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sean, I was just about to say, um, I was so um, hoping I could say, right, one, two, three, Sean, you're back in the room. <laughs> uh, nearly works. I don't know what happened. I caught bits and bobs of what you were saying. Yeah. Um, and I was on an investigation the other week and uh, a guy, Phil Newton, his name is, he was using one of these apps. Oh. And the app that he, I can't remember what it was called, uh, but basically all the banks in it spoke in reverse. Yeah. So all the words were in reverse. And I saw I a sister, I said, does this actually work? He says, sometimes you get something through. He says, well, give it a go. He's like, was anybody in here with us? Clear oh. as day, forward. He says, I'm listening. That's, that's brilliant. And it was our see, that's, that's exactly what I'm looking for on an investigation. Yeah. You no, know, it's like I was just saying there about the SB7 spirit box. Um, we took the aerial out of ours because I, I don't trust it if there's radio signals there. Even in reverse, there's always that chance that that one word will come through clear. And, yes. and if if you've got a radio signal coming through your device, then there's it's software after all. I work a lot with software. And I can tell you that even if you put it in reverse, there's still that chance that one little nugget of information or something could always spit back at you and come back the way it should. So therefore, you'll be thinking, well, how is that coming through clearly if it's in reverse? And that's, that's not to discredit yeah. what you just said. I mean, um, what you're saying there, I have no doubt, um, would have been the, exactly how you say. But that's why we took the, the aerial out, so that if we did get anything come through, there was no possible way that it was any interference from any radio. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I've got, um, I think it's the Afterlight box. Yeah, I just re- that, yeah. It's just reminded because Kelly's put here that we like the Afterlight one. And I was doing a, a Masonic Lodge in the Trust at King's Lynn. Yeah. And we had this name come through. And for sake of argument, I can't remember the name. It was like Anderson. And it's like, oh, okay. So I'm flicking through these posters that were hanging up above where the laptop was with the amp running. Oh. And there's two on there. So I says, I said, right, if that's your second name, what's your first name? And okay. again, sake of arguing, it's Kenneth. Looking through, there it was, Kenneth Anderson. And I thought, oh, what's the odds of that randomly coming through? Yep. But basically, and, again, that's bang on. That's exactly it. You're able to check something, verify it. Yeah. And, the, the paranormal investigating, uh, uh, from my experience, is, is very much boring. And let's be honest about it. And you can spend many, many hours. I mean, for a dedicated investigator, it's far from boring. But what I mean by boring is you can spend a lot of hours in a, in a location and get absolutely nothing. Yeah. And then you'll get something like what you just described there, and that's your night made. Mm. However, your average Joe Bloggs will come along to those events and go away saying, well, that was a bit rubbish. I didn't see yeah. a plane flying across the room. 
Yeah, again, all the Hollywood yeah, yeah. influence. Yeah, I mean, I'm perfectly happy if we spend 12 hours in, say, the Galleries of Justice sure. and I come away with one EVP. To me, that was a successful night. Yes, because that, that EVP will have a relevance. You know, that EVP, you should be probably be able to check or, or get something intelligent from it. And yeah. after all, it, it's again, going back to how spirits show themselves, like the shadow people situation. Pardon me, sorry, my voice is going a little bit. <laughs> um, going back to the shadow people side of things, it's a little bit like that. Spirit takes so long to come through and, and give you the evidence that you're looking for that it might just form itself in a simple word or a simple EVP or yeah. a flash of light, like I was saying before. So it might take hours for that to happen, but it might happen quite easily in the, on the flip side as well. That's it. I think a lot of, especially newer investigators who haven't done it much, I think they don't appreciate how much energy it can actually take a spirit just to say one word. Yes, exactly. exactly. I think people think it's, they expect within 12 hours to get so much stuff that they could fill a one terabyte hard drive with it. Yeah. But I think that comes through watching the TV programmes because they see so much happen in 45 minutes, not uh, realising yeah. that that's been about three days' investigation to get that 45 minutes. Yeah, exactly. And when they pay attention to these shows that do get the 45 minutes worth of um, entertainment, um, they often say that we spent three days or 72 hours or 100 hours or however long it is at that location. So you're yeah. not going to see that full amount of time. You're going to see the best bits. I say the, the edited highlights, so to say. Uh, yep, and the replays that take five minutes and stuff. I mean, what what's your thoughts on the paranormal programs? Do you think they're good for the paranormal, or that they've brought it into disrepute, so to say? Well, I recently had this conversation with someone recently. Um, um, well, actually, a couple of people, and one of these people had said, "Oh, it was a terrible thing." You know, uh, it, it just makes us look like a laughing stock and stuff. And I, I thought, well, I can sort of see where your argument is going with that. However, whether it's good, and there's certain programmes like the one that I won't mention. <laughs> um, there's certain programmes, I'm, I'm sure it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out which one that is. Um, it's not British. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. Um, these programmes, um, they're given attention. They're putting the paranormal field out there. Now, whether you like what you're seeing or whether you like the people who are getting involved in it. If your friends are getting involved in it, or anything like that, then who cares? It's getting the paranormal... It sounds very very argumentative, but it's not meant like that. But it's drawn attention to what we do. Now, you will get people who will argue with my next statement. However, it's very, very true, and it's common sense. If you have a programme that's very successful on the TV that's of the paranormal genre... I can guarantee you, you will at least get, out of the 5 million people that might watch that programme, you might get 10 or 100 or 1,000 of those people that will book events with your companies. Yeah. So why yeah. complain about it? Let it just so, get out there and let it just bring the limelight to the paranormal as much as possible. Yeah. I, mean, I, I believe as well that these programmes have gave Joe Bloggs, the general public, the confidence, when they've got something happening in their own house, the confidence now to speak out about it and get yes. somebody in to help them. Well, take, I could, John, uh, Sean, I was going to call you John there. <laughs> Sean, um, if, you, if you take, for instance, the 35 scenario, look at when their story first hit the headlines. They were a joke. Yeah. People, people laughed at them. The infield haunting was the same. People laughed at them. Um, two of the biggest cases that we've had here in Britain, uh, yeah. if not the world, I suppose, in some cases. Uh, but, it, you know, it, you're right. Now, if I had been for certain programmes, um, and the, the British one that I will not mention, uh, that because of that one, if I had been for them, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing now. Uh, this yeah. is true. I always say that, that I think probably majority of people investigating this paranormal these days, if it wasn't for oh, it's the most haunted, the chances are they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. That's it. 
absolutely. And now, I don't, I don't agree with um, half of the shows and the way that their formats are and the people they have on them. Sure, but that's just a format. The show yeah. in itself and the advertising that it's given us is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think every event company owner really should be given a nod to these sort of programs because, like you say, yeah. that's given the general public it's wet their appetite. They want to know more now. They see mm-hmm. these things and I said, they want to think, right, I want to see if there's anything into this. So they book on events. That's right, yeah. And uh, the, the, some people can be very hypocritical and say that, oh, well, it's terrible. These shows are going out there, yet they're making their own little private show on Facebook or on YouTube. And they're just doing exactly the same thing just because they don't have millions to spend on it. Yeah. That makes it any different. Do you think a lot of that is jealousy? Uh, it goes without saying. Yeah, it goes without saying. These people would like their own TV show. They'd yeah. like to be earning the money that the TV show revenue they think brings them. So any these investigators that or teams that slag off these companies, I would eat my hat if I actually wore one. If <laughs> those those actually um, those TV companies approached them and said, "Oh, look, we want to do a show with you guys." I guarantee you 99% of those people who complained about those shows would suddenly be jumping at the chance to be on them. Yeah. I've had the same argument I've had. If, if a production company came to you and says, we want you to do a series of six shows, here's £500,000 budget, get on with it. Who's going to turn that down? Exactly. Oh, but they wouldn't because this is, you know, this is how what they've said. They, they slagged off these companies and now they don't want to do it I don't think so, they would bite their (laughs) hands off straight away Exactly Um, I know you're working a lot with Lee Roberts at the moment, what sort of can you tell us anything that you've got planned and it's in the pipeline that we can expect to see coming up Well um, I I can a a few little bits but um, we're working on uh, uh, several different things Um, as, as I'm sure you're aware we have the Paranormal channel here on Facebook um, it's been quite successful and it's only been running just over a year so we're, we're, we've got a lot of um, shows on the back burner that we're making ourselves little, just little things that we're doing like you know, um, talking about ghost histories, ghost stories um, doing our own investigations together but we're, we're still doing our own individual stuff so like Lee's part of um, Haunted Live and and Haunted Events UK and that nothing like that will change you yeah. know but we, we do do our own little bits together as well which goes back to what I was saying um, why can't people do that without the jealousy and without the arguments there's just no need that's it I mean yeah. oh, I'm, going, oh, well, I'm going back a few years now quite a few years um, Vivian Powell came on an investigation with us that we had one of our team nights uh, at yeah. the Galleries of Justice and from that night, just we became firm friends. We worked together. We helped um, an American service guy organise the, the original Paracon in 2014. And we've worked together ever since. And that's when we came up with the idea of Paraforce. And it's to, I think it's to show people that, look, you can work together with other people. Yeah. Just put all egos aside, that's all it. your prejudices aside, get on with each other and see where it takes you. That's that's absolutely it. You know, um, just get yourself out there as much as you possibly can and support each other in doing it because we're not doing it. You might think that going out and investigating at the moment, you're doing it for yourself or your team. You're not. You're paving the, the way for the future. Yeah. You're paving the way for the next generation of paranormal investigators. You know, you, so you need to keep that interest going. And if we if we hang on the fact that we're being negative and putting each other off and arguing and competing against each other, eventually the end result will be that it'll just fall apart and people will just not want to do it. But, yeah, I mean, this. Sorry, sorry, carry on. I'm just going to go back to the Lee Roberts thing because I realised I was going off on one there. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, from typical Scotsman. I told you I'm off. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, Lee, I've got a few things. Um, Come up. We recently just did um, a chorus for Cora, which was um, the Twelve Hours of Terror at the Village, um, where myself I did some mediumship and Lee um, led the the investigation side of things, um, and I just supported him along with Pete Cox, and it was yeah. it was great fun. 
and such wonderful people and for such a great cause and I'd do it again in a heartbeat, you know. Yeah. It was um, fantastic to do things for free and, you know, because there's many people out there that'll do things and want to get paid for it, even if it is for charity. And, I, I, you know. Oh, yeah. And I, I mean, I travelled like nearly two and a half hours to be there for that night and I know Lee put a lot of time and effort into it as did the people who represented the charity. Um, but yeah. it was a fantastic night. So I'm sure there'll be more nights like that coming up um, with Lee in the future. That's brilliant. And those, those who are aware will know that me and Lee had a boxing match in September last year uh, mm -hmm. where he beat me. <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll stuff over that one real quick. Um, <laughs> as, as it goes, um, I'm fighting again in March and um, Lee's helping me a lot with training. But... Um, well, I, I don't know how much I can say about this because nothing's 100% set in stone. But what I can say is myself and Lee may well be needing the help from the paranormal field quite a bit in the very near future. That sounds uh, intriguing. It is very intriguing. But um, I, I can't say any more than that. But it's something very exciting and hopefully it does happen um, and if it does happen, I think it'd be a fantastic thing for the paranormal industry. Um, and again, to advertise what we do. As yeah. Years. Um, so yes, there's a lot coming up. And I quite often, I like helping out with Haunted Events UK as well. Um, yeah. so looking to do a lot more of that um, this year. Um, really, it's just take each day by day and see where it goes. But I would like to give Lee a bit of credit where it credits due, so to speak. Recently, and I don't know about yourself, but everyone has a dip um, in investigating, like finding the enthusiasm to get out and, yeah. and, and investigate, you know, because their private lives tend to overwhelm them at times, and it's difficult juggling it all. Um, yeah. I, I found myself in that same sort of environment not so long ago, and it was Lee that um, he would speak to me regularly on the phone, um, he would encourage me in what I do, um, you know, and he he's basically my paranormal buddy. He sort of kept me going in everything that I do, you know. Yeah, it's it's good to have people. I, it's the same, Viv and myself, we do that with each other, sort of say, come on, G up, let's get on with this and That's do right, this, yeah. and it's brilliant. Um, a quick question for you before we... Daniel Griffiths, Danielle Griffiths, sorry, has asked... Is there anything that you do not like to do or say when it comes to the supernatural? Anything I like to do? Sorry, what was the question? Anything that you? Is there anything that you do not like to do or say when it comes to the supernatural? So anything you wouldn't yeah. do? I don't like predicting. Um, maybe these mediums out there that, who say that you're going, this is going to happen, or that's going to happen in the future, is talking absolute baloney. Um, they will get feelings about something good maybe going to happen or whatever, but to go into detail of it and start predicting what's going to happen in someone's future, or for instance, I, mediums don't tend to talk about this very often, but you can or get feelings that something negative may be going to happen in someone's life, yeah, um, or be a death in the family or something of that nature, you know. Um, and I don't like that part of it. So if I was giving myself a private reading, Sean, and I maybe say something, and by the way, this is just for example. Yeah. Um, I may say I may say to you, um, so Sean, um, you may understand that uh, may be aware that there's going to be a death in the family. Um, to, can you just please make your loved ones that are around you be aware of that so that you're ready? You know that side of it I don't like. No, putting dread into people. Yes, it's not right, and everything having to be evil, it's a lot, of, a lot of rubbish. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Sadly, uh, about run out of time. We'll keep going for another hour. <laughs> it's um, just checking a little mention there, if possible. Of course, you can. Just very quickly, um, the paranormal channel that I was saying on Facebook that me and Lee run, um, we're actually putting together a little show, um, and we've specially invited and working alongside um, Brooks Paranormal, who Jordan Brooks, who sent the yeah. question earlier. As part of, and we're putting together a very interesting new show that will be coming um, later in the year to Facebook. Brilliant. So I just thought I'd give that a little mention. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy, Jordan, definitely. Well, a lovely bloke. 
It is. Um, just everybody there, following this show, we have Penny Morgan with Haunted Histories, and she's looking at Mary King's Close. So if you refresh as soon as we've done, and then have a listen to Penny, I'm sure that's going to be a very interesting show. Um, I want to thank you for tonight, Ryan. It's been absolutely brilliant. Loved it's it. Been my pleasure, my friend. My pleasure. So, I I could carry on for another hour, but sadly. (laughs) (laughs) So I want to thank all of our listeners for joining us in the chat room and everybody that's listened. And we shall hopefully get together again next Wednesday. And next Wednesday's guest will be announced in the next few days. So thank you all once again for your time. Thank you very much, Ryan, for agreeing to come on tonight's show. Thank you, Um, thank you. It's been brilliant. I'll hand it back over. Over to you, Carrie. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.